quite a lot of stuff has already been crossed off the list today. Class. Oh, no, no, let's start from the beginning. Cardio. Class. Okay, I guess that's pretty much the big two things. But, totally crushed that freaking econ exam. Oh my god, it felt like Rain Man. I just fucking filled it out like nothing. Uh, but I've had... So I finished first. But that's not... <laughs> Historically, for me, that has not always been an indicator of, uh, let's just say, proficiency. But no, that was pretty fucking good. When, uh, when I get it back, I'll fucking... Okay, if I, like, bomb it, I'm not gonna show you. But if I get, like, a hundred, I'll bring it into the car, show you, like, you're my fucking parents or something. Put it on the fridge. But, yeah, so... I'm kinda hyped up about that. I don't know why I was so nervous about it. But whatever, who cares? Even if I did bomb it, I would still figure out a way to hype myself up to have a good lift. You know, even though I'm sure that probably would have at least started to sour my mood. But, you know, all is well. Pre-consumed, beta alanine, tingling around. Now I'm ready for back and rear delts. And calves. And calves. I keep skipping calves like a total fool. I do mean to do them at the end of every lift. But the last two lifts, I go right, <laughs> I go like right up to close, and I don't have time to hit them. I mean, they're not slagging, you know, they're not slacking, they're not too far behind everything else. But I want some, I want some calves that jump out at you. I want some calves where when I wear shorts, you go, whoa, look at those fucking things. You know, some people have them like that. You know, some people just have them like that without training genetically blessed, whatever. But, come on, if you're not in that subsection of people, you better be freaking hitting calves at the end of your lift. Or, well, I don't know, I guess if your whole build is up to par with your standards, then maybe you can go into the gym and just do calves. Yeah. yeah. Whatever works. Yeah, right? well, if it works, it works. But, no. So back, rear delts, then calves at the end. So that'll be more so kind of just, I don't want to say fluff work, but really for me with calves, and honestly with rear delts as well, just because my shoulders are kind of ahead of the game too, the, uh, the rear delts and calves kind of does, like, it kind of does become fluff work in a sense. Like it doesn't demand the intensity of like back for me, right? Like I'm going to go crazy on back, I'm going to be hyped up, music blaring. But rear delts and calves, I can be a little more chill with it. Because I'm going more so for you know, just a burn and a pump, you know? Like, I'm not really trying to exert myself to 100% like I will on these, you know, pull-downs and rows and whatever. You know, so, better than skipping them, I can guarantee freaking tee it. So, just add them in, man. Calves, rear delts, hamstrings. I'd say they're kind of all on the same level. Maybe calves a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, being a neglected muscle group. Ha well, hamstrings I can kind of understand. You know, you want big quads. It, it, I could see how someone could kind of not make the connection about how having big hamstrings definitely makes your legs look bigger, especially from the sides. But, you know, I understand that. But I really think you guys are slacking on rear delts just by, you know, not putting as much uh, importance on them as it deserves. You know, big rear delts, I said this before, it can almost, I don't want to say make or break uh, a build, a physique, but, you know, I made this exact comparison, like either last back day or the day before last back day. If you take two dudes at the totally same build, chest, shoulders, arms, well, side delts and front delts, I mean, and one dude's rear delts are fucking, you know, Huge, up to par, really capping the back of his shoulder. And the other guy's got, like, you know, underdeveloped rear delts. The dude with bigger rear delts is going to look fucking cooler. <gasps> you know, that's pretty much how much uh, importance I put on him. So, you know, after back, just get a pump. That's sweet. So, I think that's pretty much all I got to say. I mean, back is going to end up being pull-downs, rows... And pullovers of a few varieties 
I mean, that's really all there is to back. And then rear delts will just be more than likely just laying face pulls like I like. It's not a very complicated muscle, so you know, if you like doing reverse tech deck or if you like doing face pulls or if you like, you know, bent over dumbbell lateral raises, you know, rear delt targeted, of course, whichever one of those you like the most and gives you the, uh, you know, the best pump, the best contraction, the best squeeze, I say just freaking, you know, put all your eggs in one basket there and spam them. So let's uh, let's quit dilly dallying and just get in there for that first working set. As I guess I didn't predict it, I kind of just thought it to myself. But I feel pretty fucking strong, full of carbs. So I think I'll just sit here, you know, heavy rows, try to control the first couple of reps, and then once I get a bit more fatigued, I don't mind swinging it around a little bit for some partials. So let's just throw it around for a few. Yeah, one more like that, at least. One more, and then let's do a, uh, you know, a pull down lap bias kind of movement or something. Hmm. I think either normal straight bar pull downs or pullovers. I'll decide in a moment. I'm definitely feeling fucking strong on these. I uh, I only have the carbs to thank. But let's move on. Perfect openers. Usually I would move on to normal pull downs, but I kind of want to change it up a little bit. So instead of doing a really heavy movement now, you know, you got to think. I just kind of did really heavy rows. I want to change it up, do some light squeezing shit. So single arm pullovers, real light, only 35 pounds on the stack. And then, you know, what's making the set difficult isn't the actual weight itself. Like I could probably just bust out a ton of reps if I do them really quick, but I'll try to do them slow, hold it for just a moment, get a crazy squeeze, like try to feel my lats contract all the way down to like as low as they insert. If you kind of, uh, if you get what I'm saying there. But basic premise, squeeze the fuck out of them. This is gonna contribute to the pump for sure. Even though it's not a fucking ball to the wall heavy set. So I'm gonna start with the weaker side first. My left lat slightly smaller and then uh, let's get a couple here and go from there. Technique wise, not only am I trying to squeeze at the bottom really hard, like I feel like I'm trying to sheath a sword into my hip. That's kind of the cue I'm imagining. But when I come up to the top, like a fucking pull down or whatever, 
I'm trying to really open up my fucking scapula. You know, I want my shoulder blade to like go from here to here if you get what I'm saying. Uh. Let's move on to um, something. Partly because I wanted to do another rowing movement and partly because all other rowing machines were taken, let's just come back here and do some cable rows. A little bit different than the beginning because before I was going about shoulder width grip, elbows relatively tucked and I was fucking just trying to throw around as much weight as possible. I'll go way lighter wider grip and instead of going like down here which kind of adds to a, a lot of lat activation i'm gonna flare my elbows up a lot higher and really manually flex my fucking mid back traps you know all this extra cool shit up here so much slower controlled burning reps and then uh i don't know how many i'll do i'll just have to see how it feels Okay, I don't think I want to finish with this, but set number seven, single arm pull downs, get squeezed on the lats. I, I think I'll probably finish with some kind of row just to kind of round off the pump. Because by, by here, well, by the time that this set's done, I mean, my lats are probably fully pumped. So I kind of want to finish with some, you know, upper back stuff. But just one set here, squeeze it, you get the idea. Okay. Yeah, let's uh let's find a road to finish back day off with. I did not expect to make the seated row my home for this back day. But everything's else, everything else is kind of taken, and I don't want to wait more than like three minutes for something. But I mean, I'm I'm not dissatisfied. This back pump is sick. So I think I'll just do a drop set, you know, heavy in the beginning, throw it around, drop the weight by half, light squeezing reps, and then we should be fully pumped, perfectly primed to bust out some crazy lat spreads. <clears throat> Okay. You know what, fuck the drop set, that was enough. Let's go find some good lighting. Alright, yeah, we're in focus. Exposure turned down to a nice, comfortably freaky level. And my back feels as fucking pumped as ever. Perfect fucking storm for some freaky poses. So one thing I do like about the button-up is easy removal you know especially with a back pump depending on the shirt i've actually got some fucking trouble taking it off 
Just because, I mean, with a chest pump, it's not as crazy. Like, it's just stuff in here. But a full back pump? Like, honestly, I was getting a little worried I was going to rip this shirt doing the rows. I'm lucky it kind of has a little bit of a uh, little bit of stretch to it. Uh, all right. So. Let's just do front lat spread first, and then we can turn around for the real money shot. Oh, I almost feel like it's hard for me to get my fucking arms into a good position for a double buy because my back is so tight. They don't want to like turn upward, but let's see how it looks from the back. Oh, I can already see some fucking veins creeping out. Not really complicated in terms of the poses for back. Lat spread, front double by, and then the same shit in reverse. So I'll have to review the footage to see just how crazy the back lat spread and back double by shot were. But again, just by feel, like even if I weren't to have even checked this pump, I would know that it was pretty good. Like you can kind of get a subjective sense of the, uh, like I kind of almost want to say like, the internal pressure of my lats and my traps and everything else back there. But solid back day. <coughs> Guaranteed contributed to some fucking growth. Now just time to finish it off with uh, rear delts and calves. Rear delts, I'm just going to sit here eight sets of reverse peck. I don't know, what am I saying? Laying face pulls. That's a mild aneurysm. But it's really all I feel like I need for rear delts. I mean, I can squeeze the whole thing. I feel a solid burn throughout the entire head of it. Plus, I get a good rear delt pump every time. I mean, obviously, you want to change up your training. Don't do the same shit always. Like, some days I'll do some bent over dumbbell laterals or some reverse pec deck. But for now, I'm just going to stick with what I know I like. So let's just clip through the next eight sets, check the pump, and then cut to calves. Okay. All right, so I feel kind of fucking weird just doing, just showing eight sets of the reverse or of the laying face pulls. It just seems kind of redundant in a sense. They all look the same. Just imagine those fucking eight times instead of, uh, what did I do, three? I don't remember. But that's it. You know, I just sat there, spammed them. So let's see what we're looking rear delt wise. I wanted to go in a on the other side of the gym, there's some cool lighting, but yeah, right here's all right, you know. So let's see, is the fucking uh, the rear delts poking out? Your God, holy shit, they're really fucking poking out right over the tricep. Very freaking nice. See that right there is what I'm talking about. I should really have my shoulder like way back here. My uh, my fucking pecs and front delts are so tight. I need to start stretching out a little bit. But that is what I'm freaking talking about. You know, where it's just crawling over top of the tricep. Just kind of like a, you know, a two-level type situation. All right, there's the tricep roundness. But then there's this extra, you know, rear delt shit going on as well. You know, I'm not joking. Big rear delts will totally change your look. Even if it's just kind of like subtle you know it's something just looks off a little bit if your rear delts are slacking let's uh let's get a last spread and then freaking get calf started oh. all right time for eight sets of heavy ass machine calf raises right. end of the lift at least in terms of my you know torso based body parts, but still going to go hard on calves. As much weight as I can muster for reasonably controlled reps in the beginning, 
And then maybe I'll try to do a little bit of bouncing partials at the end. Uh, <laughs> I'd say try to be careful if you do a machine like this. You don't want to go so heavy and go to like, you know, so hard that you can't fucking re-rack it. Or else you're, uh, you're seriously asking for trouble. But let's just bust out a couple here and then get ready to check the calf pump. Who doesn't love a good calf pump check? <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. I think maybe, uh, yeah, maybe three or four heavy like that, and then I might drop the weight and do some more kind of volume burnout sets. But I'll just sit here for a minute. So I didn't do this intentionally, but I kind of, uh, I kind of forgot these pants were fucking like zippable into shorts. So instead of rolling them up for the pump check, I can just do a little bit of a fucking conversion right now. Plus get a little bit of extra airflow. Be a little bit cooler too. This feature will probably come in handy more so during the summer months, but this is just a little, uh, little pump tease. Still got one more set, and then we can really try to find some cool lighting. If I can get these fuckers off. There we go. Now let's check the pump. We'll just go for a fucking bottom half of the body shot, like when adults walk into scene in like the Rugrats or shit like that. There's definitely some fucking meat down there, that's for sure. When they're pumped, they lose a little bit of definition, but what are you gonna do? I mean, I swear, dude, fucking daily simulation, just a pump like that, it only took me, what, maybe 10, 12 minutes? And like, my calves are seriously pumped. I was going hard, but I'm not like extra fatigued or anything. You know, it's not that hard to add calves in. I think some of you guys just, uh, you just want to, I don't think it's not that you don't want bigger calves, but I think you got to accept the fact that to get them, you got to sit here on the calf raise for a little bit. But let's zip my pants back on and get in the car. All right, lift done, calves pumped, back pumped. Rear delts freaking pumped up to hell. That's sick. That is sick. And so I just get to go home and freaking eat. Oh, dude, I'm hungry too. I um, I didn't eat a ton midday. I was kind of busy studying and like doing a little bit of our school, little bit of uh, of other school stuff. You know, kind of giving me a little bit of a wake up call because whenever I sit down to do a bunch of like you know, either work or like a project or, you know, like whatever else. I, um, I'm not saying I always do it, but it's a lot easier not to like you know, go down to the kitchen for 10 minutes, prep yourself a pound of ground beef, you know, mix in like some cheese, barbecue sauce, whatever, and then you know, chew on that while you're doing your stuff. You know, passive consumption of food, like just sitting snacking, 
like kind of just eating, not even because you're hungry, but just kind of because there's food right in front of you. In a dieting context, that is not ideal. You do not want to just have like fucking snacks floating around to munch on. But if you're bulking up, snacks add up. Snacks freaking add up, dude. Every time I go to class, probably a waste of money, but I always get a little snack from the vending machine. Be it like, you know, a thing of fruit snacks, 100 grams of carbs right there, 400 calories. Or like fucking, I don't know, a thing of pretzels or checks or whatever. You know, just a little freaking something. And like two or three of those, that could be a thousand calories, you know. That's, that could be the difference between you being in a deficit or being in a surplus. So, and uh, when it comes to bulking up, well, I guess what I was really trying to say was, you know, a lot of foods are sneakily dense in calories. Like, it's not difficult to overshoot a calorie deficit just by, you know, stopping in the pantry and getting a couple of Doritos or a couple of Cheetos. And you do that a couple of times a day, you don't track it. Ooh, that'll freaking hit you, man. That will hit you. But enough of this diet talk. In a bulking context, I can eat your food, man. Simple. There's no specific kind of food. You know, eat your gram per pound of protein. Gram per pound of body weight of protein. Ideally from, you know, probably animal sources. Meats, fish, eggs, chicken, dairy. Stuff like that is your best bet. It's got the highest grading scale of protein on the, uh... Honestly, I feel like that's just what it's called, but protein grading scale it's like zero to a hundred and right up there on top you know beefs chickens milk protein fish you see what i'm saying it's it's kind of a no-brainer and then the rest of it when it comes to fats i mean i I do look i do look out for trans fats guaranteed not awesome you know it's not like i just fucking eat anything but to an extent i kind of do and then carbs i mean Dude, instant rice, ramen, breads, donuts, bagels. In my eyes, carbs are carbs. And if you don't pack on too much body fat all at once, then if you have to eat some sweets to you know, actually change the scale, then I think that's just what you've got to do. So enough talk about dieting tips and whatever else. I got cardio in the morning. 30 minutes on a seated bike. Now, I have a seated bike at the house. Like, right in the kitchen, I've got a little seated bike. So, I could save myself, you know, a little five minute transit. Luckily for me, my gym is two seconds away from the house. It's a college gym. But, you know, I could just do the cardio in the kitchen, and that would be the end of it. I'd save myself a trip. And if your gym is, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes away, if, uh, if cardio in the morning for you means you got to go in before work and before school, then having a little bike or like a treadmill in the basement, that'll save you some time. Make it way easier before you hit your cardio. But what I was trying to say was, <laughs> unless I'm really in a rush, I always just like going to the gym purely for the social factor of it, you know? Like, first and foremost, I'm going there to do my shit, right? Getting the lift done, getting the cardio done. But once it's over... I mean, I just freaking like people. The people in the gym are, for the most part, like the people I like the most. So I'm always chatting with them. I, uh, I feel a little, I've said this exact thing before, I feel a little bit selfish. Uh, because when I'm lifting, you know, I never, um, ambulance Halloween night. Somebody's not having an awesome time. But what I was going to say was, fucking, um, I feel a little bit selfish because when I lift, you know, I, I talk a little bit in between sets, of course. I'm not like a, I'm not totally like, fucking, what's the, I don't have the blinders on. I'm not like completely in the zone, not talking to anybody. But, you know, I'll talk for maybe a couple of minutes, you know, like two or three max, and then I got to do my set. But once I'm done lifting, or at least once the main body part or body parts are you know, done for me. Plus I do my little pose down. Like today, obviously the main body part was back. And then rear delts, I was a little more chatty during them just because it wasn't so uh, intense. My training for those didn't require so much intensity. But, you know, chest, shoulders, 
once those are done, then I, I think I tend to be a little bit of a distraction to some of my buddies, because I'm always, uh, I always just kind of like fucking loitering around, ghosting them, like, kind of just following around whatever they're doing, but, you know, whatever, it's fun in there, man, if, uh, especially if you go to the same gym for long enough, you've got to see the same people over and over again, you know, and if, really, I think if you don't talk to them, then you're just missing out on some, I mean, if we want to get <laughs> just about performance, you're probably missing out on some fucking good information, because you know, just random dudes in your gym, they know some shit that you probably don't. Or they know maybe a kind of push down or a kind of peck fly. Where, like, maybe you see them do it, but you don't want to ask them, like, hey, what, why are you doing that? Like, so just in a performance standpoint, it's going to be good for you. Because then you can ask people for spots and fucking assisted reps and stuff like that. But then it just makes the gym more fun. You know, obviously I'm here to get jacked, get huge. You know, we're focused on freaking gains. But... You gotta have fun too. So, a little chit chat. Honestly, a lot of chit chat post lift. I love it. I freaking love it. So, yeah, what I was kind of saying was when I do cardio in the morning, I get a little bit extra of that when I go to the gym instead of just doing it at the house. So, I guess that's another benefit to actually going there. Because, you know, yeah, sure. You could just walk around your block, you can do a jog, you know, put your tennis shoes on, do a home workout with a jump rope. I think I just like the social exposure. Or maybe just the vibe of actually being there. Whatever. Whatever you gotta do to get your 30 minutes in, you know. I'm not saying you have to go to the gym. Fuck, man, just... I don't know. You can build up a solid sweat doing, like, some burpees or something. You're probably not gonna catch me doing something like that, but... You know, you gotta figure out what works best for you. <laughs> I feel like that's, um... I feel that's I feel like that's becoming my mission statement. But I think that's pretty much all I gotta say. I've got some Chipotle that I got earlier, uh, in prep in a sense, sitting in the fridge, a bunch of soft tacos, steak, cheese, rice, queso. Thirty seconds in the microwave and I'm gonna be having a good time. And then I'll probably make a ribeye or I don't know, man, fucking really, as long as I hit my uh Get my protein and get some solid carb sources and some fats as well. I'm just eat whatever I've got floating around the kitchen. So I will see you next time.